Good evening and uh, welcome to my third interview for the PAs on behalf of Dance Decade. This is DJ Hooks and the last two weeks we've done uh, Davos last week in Blackpool and the first week was Ian Blanc from Dream Frequency in Dancing Divas and that was at Charlotte Richard, a very iconic event for people who used to go to the raves in the North West. This evening we've travelled to Merseyside and I'm really proud to uh, be interviewing a gentleman from Baseheads. Daza, how are you sir? Fantastic. Nice yeah. to meet you. Alright. Baseheads. Baseheads, we'll just in be very house. careful and knock, knock this one over. Okay, so the impetus is on this gentleman, it's a very similar setup as the last two, we just want to find a little bit about this gentleman, what are his influences, where he comes from and what he's looking forward to about the night the most. Alright, so, it's been really nice to meet you sir, we've had a nice little chat before, let's not shake hands too much, but we'll go for it all evening. I love it. Absolutely. Alright, so, what inspired you to get into dance music? Records. The vinyl. Vinyl. Brilliant. Um, I, I inherited a record collection from my brother who was like uh, six years older than me and he used to have all these records and I thought, what are those? So I, I would get his records and play them and I was just like fascinated about this final thing that you could take out seven inch, they were all seven inch singles and albums at that time. Yeah. So final for me, we always had the, the best collection than any of my friends so people used to come around to my house and say, what are all those records? And that, most people had about 10 or 12, but we had about, about 100 or 100 on, on shelves. Yeah. And I thought, and my brother had this collection, and I thought, well, I want to outbeat my brother. So I started buying my records, yeah. and, and my collection outgrown his, and that's what it was. So, but he was into, at that time, he was into like sort of rock, uh, Pink Purple, uh, Machine Hair, uh, Rod Stewart, Elton John, uh, Paul Simon, all, all that kind of stuff, and, and, and I was like, like well, I, I found a, an album by a band called it's my girlfriend, yeah, but we can't, we can't answer it. Sorry, no, Lord. I still love you, but I can't answer it. Um, He's busy. He really is busy. But I found this um, album. A, an album by a band called Blue Magic from America. Right. And that was the first introduction to, for me to, to go on a journey to go and find records. <laughs> yeah. And then I went to a local record shop and I started buying records, 70 singles, 70 singles. And then the very first 12 inch single I ever bought was by Tavares for the Mighty Power of Love. Yeah. Right. And I went into the shop and I said, um, can I have the Tavares single? And they said, uh, yeah, here it is. And I said, no, I don't want the album. I was a 12 inch single, brilliant. There was no such thing as a 12 inch no. single, I'd never heard of it. No. I went in and I said, can I have the, the, the uh, can I have um, the new Tavares single? And he said, uh, here it is. And I said, well, no, I want the, I don't want the album, I want the 7 inch single. And he said, no, this is a new thing called the 12 inch. And I, it. And I said, how much is it? And he said, 59p. And I thought, okay, I'll have it. Yeah. I thought it was getting a bargain. It was a four track EP. Brilliant. And I've still got that. And that was your journey into vinyl? In, into vinyl. Yeah. And ever since then. So I just carried on going. And, and music changes and music develops. So yeah. you're going from disco yeah. to soul to funk to house to hip hop. Well, but from hip hop to house. And that's, that's, yeah. what I'm no, so that's fine. So the question started was your influences into vinyl, which is absolutely fantastic. Because that's what it is. About house. So we're going on from the house, from yeah. the house influence. So when did you first? So what was your main, what your inspiration, inspiration into dance records? And what, what was, what was your first sort of genre? I mean, we, we just had a little chat before and off camera, and it was pre-rave. It was sort of like we, we, we used the well, word acid house, don't we? So it's okay. late eighties, isn't it? So that's right, the influence from okay. house. But basically, my my influence. I DJ'd in Corfu in nineteen eighty-five, and I was playing a lot, a lot of music, and I was I was away from where I lived on. Uh, Merseyside. So when I, when I went abroad, it, it allowed me to open up my ideas to what I wanted to play because I wasn't playing to a regular audience. So when I came back from 85, I got offered three DJ jobs on the, on the same week that I came back. Brilliant. And then it allowed me to say, I've had four months away from this scene, so I can just put my, put my, my idea of how I should DJ yeah. in these clubs. So that's what it was, and, and I just started developing my own style with the music that I was listening to. So abroad, I had people from London, Scotland, Sheffield, Lancaster, just all over the UK who would come to my club. It was Paradise and Benitez in yeah. 1985. I was the resident DJ there. Yes. For four months. Brilliant. It was fantastic, yeah. mate. And uh, 
so, so every every two weeks you get a new crowd. Yeah. So, you, so somebody will come in and say, oh, we like this one, we like it's like, okay, I can incorporate that. I have never take a request, but I'd take a suggestion. Yeah, that's what so we yeah, fit yeah. into what I want to do. It's like, okay, this is great. Uh, and we we were known in, in Benitez as the most upfront dance club on yeah. on on that on that year yeah. in, in, in 85. Pause you there, Desmond. So this is 1985-86 and this is the first time the DJs in England, I would imagine, or English DJs, are given the opportunity, like you say, not to say, I'm going to take a request. People will come and they will listen to what you want to, yeah, yeah, to I, play. I, yeah, I, 1985 to 86 is when we stopped being someone else's you know, dog's body to being a musical sort of like inspiration for others. That's for me, brilliant. For me, yeah, that's for me, brilliant. For me, it was. Yeah, uh, that's I, and that's what I realised. I'm there every week, and it's like you're not going to come into my club and tell me what I'm going to play. I'm saying this is what our club's about. Yeah, and it, it, it's the beginning of uh, the, the acid house scene. Is like we're, we're, we're just going to do what we want to do. Yeah, nobody's telling us what no. to do. You, you, you play this. I don't want to play that. So it's a it's a rebellion in itself, but in a polite way at that time in '85. And it was a mixed genre of music moving into that acid house Abs scene. Wasn't it? It was so many different influences from reggae to house to hip hop to you name it, and then it then became that. It was eclectic. It was eclectic music, and, yeah. and eclectic music at that time was from, let's like, say. From uh, well, basically, what happened was I came back from that that season in '85. I got three um, DJ jobs that week. Um, and before I went away, I couldn't get a DJ job. Right, but I came back with a fresh attitude, and I could see the scene. Going away from the scene made me realise what was missing. I had to take myself away from what was going on to see what needed to happen. Not, not just for me, for the scene. Because when you're in it, it's like, well, you can't, you're in it, you can't view it. So you take yourself away and you say, you know what? When I come back, I'm going to do something different, and I did something different, and I opened a club called the Death House, and it was the first house club on this side that, fact, that literally played and promoted house, house music. Brilliant. It was called the Death House, and basically, it's a transition period of musically, because soul, funk, hip hop, house, disco was all still being played in all yeah. these clubs and I thought well I can bring these all together yeah. under one roof and we called it the Death House and, and I'm not saying we just played house we, we didn't because yeah. nobody could no. if you're talking about 1987 nobody could just open the club and I'd say we're playing house now there was not I wasn't just, enough around was there wasn't enough no. around there wasn't enough around and it wasn't uh, prevalent e even in Chicago uh, Frankie Knuckles and all that we still, still play disco, play disco. Yeah, Massive, absolutely. Absolutely. even the dub sides or the instrumental uh, absolutely. still just absolutely. Absolutely. Mixes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely so talking of, of early sort of um, clubs, um, so you've got your own clubs that you set up yourself. Yeah, yeah I own two your first clubs. Yeah, yeah. Two clubs. So what's what's your favourite club? You just as a DJ from start to finish. What's the favourite? What's your favourite club? You played at? Well, I have to say the favourite club was the Death House, was, which was, was your first club. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why is because it's a stepping stone from what used to be yeah. to what we know yeah. now. Yeah. So everywhere has to start. And it's like we were at the beginning. We were at that transition period, and this is a, a, this is very important because most people talk about when house started, when they incorporated it. But it's like how did we get there? And it's like that's the struggle. That's the interesting part. Most people got over it because they didn't get into it until later on. I'm a little bit older than most people, so I didn't start making um, dance music with the bass until 1991. But I was DJing for such a long, long time. But it's a struggle to get from there to there. You, ha you have to fight. Yeah. House music, people dance from side to side. Yeah. Girls dance with guys. Yeah. But but when house music came on, guys dance with guys because they love the music. Yeah. Uh, people dance on a different rhythm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all important. This, this period is very important. From 1985 to 1987 is an amazing, important. It is. It's, it's the ground roots. It's the roots where everyone got all the little bits of information from different styles of music we thought. I can feel something and I want to turn it into something and what am I going to put it into and then that's where all these different genres came from. And then 87, 
and that, uh, you know, house music uh, for me started uh, with, with tracks like Jack Your Body, yeah. which was 1985. Yeah. But it was just, it, was, it, it, was, it wasn't a house movement. Yeah. House hadn't been invented yeah, then. Really it was just there, another right? record yeah. in the UK. Yeah. It was just another record in the UK. Love Can't Turn Around came around. Yeah. Can You Feel oh, It? Just the the fingers. Yeah, the fingers. Wash Machine, yeah, which right. was on the B side yeah. of that, that, that 12 inches. And Marshall Jefferson. And Marshall that House Music Anthem. All these yeah. tunes were early Death House tunes, but it wasn't a scene. No. It was just tracks that we kept on playing, but suddenly these records were, were the ones that we thought, well, hold on, we want more of that. These so are the stepping we sort, stones. We sort out, com, com, uh, uh, communicate uh, by uh, Full House, yeah. all, all these tunes. But we, we would mix Full House into uh, Dorato Whistle Bump, yeah. which was a set 1978 yeah. disco track. So so we could we could mix it because it was the same, same thing. So what Frankie Douglas was doing in the warehouse, we were doing it on Mercy's side on the road at the same time. But we didn't know. No. Because no. the media the media was not Facebook, there was no media. It was literally no, nothing. We were doing it because it because we came from the same place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've got the same sort of rooms, different types of music, you always listen to and they've got it. I grew up on disco and disco Basically, house is disco. At, at that time, it's just reinvented disco, yeah. and that's what it was. Yeah. And then it, it's gone into yeah. different genres. And, and, but, and, and, and what happened is, and the introduction of Roland <laughs> really sort of transferred a lot of the dr early drum machines. You know, yeah, and that, yeah, 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 that yeah. made people get that next step in sort of away from disco and into more of an industrial style. Well, you, you can make it, and then it's sped up. But I tell you, the, the, the king of when I was doing the deck house was Todd Terry. Yeah. Todd Terry's beats and his rhythms and his grooves and the tracks, and he did it under so many pseudonym names. Yeah. But every track that came out on that side was like that was our groove. So we, we we grew into that, and then it, then it, then it went into like Belgian techno, it went into acid house. All these these different splinters came up, but it, it originally came from disco. So house music came from disco. That's what I want to say. Absolutely. So going back to questions, same questions as last time. So I'm looking before. I'm not checking out my Facebook profile. Just a look. So we have furthest you've ever played away from home across the globe. Um. Well, I, I have to say. Do you know what? I've been loyal to what I, I created. What when I started, I've stayed in my area, uh, 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 area, and tried to develop and try and bring people through through what I was doing. I've never gone. I've never seen to go further afield. I'd say. Corfu when, when it started, so you've been the but groups, when I came yeah. back, I stayed. I tried to build within my area. I tried to. That's why everyone knows me, yeah. and I, I'm loyal to Merseyside, Liverpool, yeah. the world. I've, I've never, I've never, I've been offered loads of uh, gigs abroad, and I've done gigs abroad. Um, only when the records came out, yeah. but I've tried to stay local. Yeah. So I set up my own club. The first club was the Deck House, which ran from 80, April, the 27th of April 1987 um, to 1989, and I opened my own underground acid house club in 1988, which was the 5th of August 1988, which ran to 1991. And I started the base head in 1980. The basement. The basement. The basement. That's where the, 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 the base heads come from. Just putting it together. Oh, sorry, oh, it's sorry. All right. <laughs> it's my job. Okay, how the bass heads came about was everyone who used to go to a club was known as a head in Liverpool. Yeah. What, where are you from? You were called a head. Yeah. So if you went to my club, you were called. If, if you went to the Quadrant Park, you were a quad head. Yeah. Or a deaf head or a whatever. Head it would be. If you went to the States, you were a state head. Yeah. If you went to my club, which was the basement, you were a base head. So it made so it made sense. Everyone who comes to my club was under. It started in, in uh, August the fifth, nineteen eighty-eight. It's an underground acid house club, and everyone out there was known as a bass head. So I thought when I started Brilliant. recording music, yes, the bass head. What a great name! That's a bit of that. Is a question that has already been answered. So. Other than bass heads, have you had any other pseudonyms that you put any music out on there? Yes. Yes. But I don't like to tell people. Shh. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, 
I've done drum and bass, I've done three tracks and drum and bass. Really? I can't tell you what they are though. Okay, that's fine. Well, so you've done other work though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's no, absolutely fine. Yeah, I, I so you like, so this is the, so you have an eclectic style of music that you've had. Absolutely. And every now and again you'll go off and, and produce something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, you know, from your well, fat boy Slim to whoever, everyone has more than one name. They like, you know, yeah, they like yeah, to I've keep got them. a few names. Really? Yeah, so you've got your different jobs. Well, I, I, I did a track actually with Gary Christian from the Christians. Yeah. Uh, if anyone knows the Christians, yeah. uh, I did a track called um, which was a Beatles track called My Sweet Lord. So you can check that out online, it's yeah. still there, that's based on Gary Christian, My Sweet Lord. But I don't go for that side of thing because no. I'm more you, you, that's, with this brand. Yeah, that's that's it, right? So, all good. Uh, but three drum and bass tracks as well, and, and uh, got loads of um, disco remixes under different names and, and a pseudonym and stuff like that. So, yeah, so, yeah, so that, that's your main one, but you've done other things under that, that's yeah, absolutely yeah. fine. All good. Okay, so you've had the feathers right and any pseudonyms. So, just off the top of your head, because these are great, because as DJs okay, and look, music well, producers... Have to me, I'll, I'll have a little drink. Have a little drink, yeah, okay. so like, as music producers and, and DJs, we can change our favourite three records 50 times a day, and then I have my favourite three oh my tunes God, this morning, go. could be different than what they had this evening, but I'm not going to say you're most influential, because that's very difficult, but name, off the top of your head, three very influential tunes in your career. Okay, I'll go, I can only go with, um, Washing Machine by Mr. Fingers. Fingers. Excuse me. Right, yes. I tell you that why, because that was a death house tune. So I'll, I'll go with clubs actually, that's the best way to do it. Cool. So washing Machine, washing machine with, Mr. Fingers. Right. It was a massive track for me. Actually, Death House. That was de Death House. I know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Washing Machine, massive, massive track. This was, this was something where we're introducing a, an instrumental sound yeah. to people who probably weren't familiar with dance at that time. I, I'm actually, now that you've said it, I'm loads of heads, loads of times are coming together. That's your first one. T T Koi Carino yes. was, was another one, yeah. which was massive for us. It was a, a, a massive big track. But and now I've processed it down to the biggest influential house track that I've ever heard in our state was recent San Antonio the sound. Yes. Right, and I'll tell you why there's a reason why why, why I say that. Is I started the Death House in April 1987 and it took me five months to realise I'd cracked it. So you, you do a night, yeah, you, you do, do another night, you do another night, yeah. you've got five. I remember, I can, I can still remember where I was standing, listening to that record, being played, looking at, and, and looking around thinking, this is it, this has done it. And so recent San Antonio, the sound, is my all-time favourite house record. Fantastic. So you've got Mr. Fingers, we've got recent San Antonio, and the, the middle one was... t coins t coins yeah. The big, big hack anthem for me. Early days of Graham Park. Okay, so um, your favourite piece of work that you have either written or been involved in writing? <laughs> Is there anybody out there? <laughs> okay. um, yeah, it has to be a that's, that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's not made. Yeah, I'll tell, tell you what, I had. Um, see, I, I suppose what it's like, it's like maybe a footballer playing for. A, a small club moving to Liverpool and then go to the Premier. Is there any bad day? It was our Premier League uh, track. Yeah. So, that, yeah. so that's, that's, the, that's the way it is. Yeah. So I can say um, that has to be my favourite record. And the simple reason is, and this is what I love, because when you write a track or you do a track, you don't know what the track is going to be successful. No. It's just a good track. Yeah. So you say, oh, I love that, I've done that. Yeah. The people decide, yeah. and Is There Any Bread There was decided by the public. Yeah. And the what? DJs. Uh, the DJs yeah. and the public, yeah. I used to play at plus two, I was a naughty boy. Just tweak it a little bit. You can actually put it up to plus six and it still sounds great. Old school vinyl, but yeah, SL1200 as well. Yes, mate. Uh, no, but that's what it is. It, it's like, uh, we didn't decide, we, see, I've always said this to people, when I work with people, is listen, all you can be happy with is create what we do in this room together. So I always see it as, you cast a stone, you make a piece of music and you throw it in a pond, and those ripples then go out to create whatever it is. Yeah. But you have to be happy yeah. with casting that stone. That's why you do Don't yeah. cast a stone, because the ripples aren't going to happen. Oh, when you're happy, saying, fuck, now we've done really, sorry to swear, but we've done really, 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 really good, 
It's like we've cast the stone and that went on and did its own thing. It's not to do with me. No. We just, we, but if you don't do anything, I saw it, I'm not going to, I can't even say the people involved in it, but you can't do anything. You can't create anything unless you do something. So you have to put the work in. Yeah. Put the work in. Good or bad, just do it. Yeah. That's what I say. Just do it and you, do, you never know where it's going to go. No. We, we have three, um, two EPs before this new year day comes out. And if, if people go on Discogs, uh, you can look at the Death House EP Volume 1, which is Desil 001. Death House EP uh, 2 is uh, 002. Uh, is there anybody out there? Is the below three? Right. So, so you, you can check yeah. that out for yourselves. Yeah. Like, but so, but, but you have to create. Yeah. You can, loads of people. I, I used to be around, surrounded by really good friends. Still good friends of mine now. But so much talented than me. But don't put the work ethic into it. Absolutely. So, you've so, got to do it. it yeah, you've got to do it. So, so it's not. It's not just about talent. Talent gets you a certain place. Where effort. You, you can't. You can have all the talent in the in, in, in the world, but if you don't work at yeah. doing, doing it, if you don't push it, if you don't have the other elements, it's never gonna happen. Yeah. You need to have a, You need to have a little more than that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And what have we got here? So, again, that tune, which is your favourite tune, which is fantastic. That's you know your most influential piece of music. Again, that comes through all those samples and genres. We talked about Africa and Barter and where that comes from, and that again is from a completely different style of music. That there's just something about it, and then you've created. Well, it married together. And then people will look at your tune and have heard your tune first and go, "What's that sample?" And then they learn and go back and buy the Africa and Barter, and it's a two. That's and that's the I best. Love. It's just it's fluid, isn't it? It's a two-way if, you, if you're into music, you yeah. you will go and say, "Well, where'd that sample come from? Why why is it he's chosen that sample?" It's like it's because. Um, his influences come from a different area. So, so if, if you're interested, if you're deep in it, yeah. you, you, as you do, yeah. you go deep. I, I, I learned about my music through going back and researching. So I've heard of his music and I think, oh, well, I want to know more about that. So that's my personal journey. Yeah, yeah so. absolutely. Okay, so, love this one. I say this third time now, my guilty pleasure. <laughs> uh, you love this one, don't you? George Michael, different corner, read the lyrics. I was broken hearted, sorted my life out. It's amazing. Guilty pleasure, sunshine. Guilty pleasure of music. What is it? Or is there, isn't there such a thing as a guilty pleasure? No, there is. I'll tell you, the guilty pleasure would be Alton John, Rod Stewart. Um, is that your brother's influence? Yeah, your brother? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because and listen, you say, yeah, Alton John. No, but no. it's a guilty pleasure, but, but it's, it's a really important uh, David influence Bowie, at the time. Uh, yeah. David Bowie, absolutely. David Bowie, Elton John, Rod Stewart, and I tell you what, with, with, uh, Pink Floyd, yeah. also as well, these were all my brother's influences that, I, that were passed yeah. on to me. But what it was, was to seek out, um, regardless of, of, of what you think about Elton John, melodies and songwriting is amazing. Absolutely. It's absolutely amazing. So if you if you look at those artists, uh, that top line, if you look for a top line for a song, you need to have those things that, that put people in. Yeah. And he was a master. And he was a master. And, and, well, he, he wrote the music. Very top of the lyrics, so uh, I'll jump. We had, but, but don't buy anything from Elton John after 1981 because it's all crap. <laughs> but you heard it. But prior to that, I swear. So, so, and also as well, it's when you when you're young, you're, you absorb music, so it's it, it's whatever comes in, and usually it, it's from your, your, your family or your friends, and it's like, and then you decide. But, but I can still. It amazes me, and I, 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 this is still amazes me. I'm, I was never a big Beatles fan no. growing up because it was not not my era. I know every Beatles record. Yeah. How? No, it's just How rare. do I know it? It's because these melodies transcend time, and that's what the music does. Absolutely. This came out in 1991. They said started in 1990. It's never ended. It was 1991. We're hitting on 25 years, 26 years, or whatever. It's like. The, the trans music transcends time if it's good enough yeah, and if absolutely. it's got the hooks there. Absolutely. And that's why people still get on. You've got the hooks here. 
Oh. Yes, me. Yeah. Comedy gold line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me. <laughs> All right, so a couple more questions. Okay, so um, I know that you know of the other acts that are playing, and, you, and you've had your fortune. There's a little bit of sort of like there's a, there's a history between you and, and a few of the acts. Absolutely. Which one of the acts that else that are on that, other than yourself, would you most like to see? Do you know what? I'm, I'm, there's, there's loads of people on this lineup that I'd love to see. My girlfriend, Kirsty, would love to see Adamski rising. I need not, not, not just to see. I, I, I did a gig with Ian Bland on New Year's Eve. Great to see him again. But I've got to say, my, my favourite, and I'm looking forward to seeing the most, is K-Class. Brilliant. That's right. No, we've, swear, done two, we've done two gigs with K-Class, and no. I mean, it's lovely people as well. No, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Can I, I, officially I say, I love Russ and Caroline from Cape <laughs> I really do. Yes mate, that sounds fantastic. So, 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 so I'm, I know yeah. we're going to have a great... Yeah. Do you know what, the line-up, the, I was just saying to Rob before, the, he's off camera by the way. Um, There's his a choice, his choice. Is there even for that? Um, but the, re, the line-up that you've got for this gig is fantastic. I've worked with uh, six people and, uh, that's that, that, that's yeah, on there. So, I'll be doing my DJ set downstairs in the vinyl room with nine other DJs, which is going to be such good fun. But for me, it's FPI projects because they. Well, I did a Jersey gig with them. Brilliant, uh, yeah. Like so you played them before, fantastic. 18 months ago, I did uh, Scotland with them as well. Oh, fantastic. So should, should been there. That'd be nice to catch up as well. They, they, and they are fantastic. Are they live? They are fantastic. Wait. But really to, to, to see meet, enjoy, and spend the night with, it's got to be K the Cake Ass Boys. Yeah, Paul, Russ, Caroline, Bobby, fantastic. Great guys. Super. Okay, now there's a question which uh, Rob likes to ask, all right? But we don't really, we shouldn't really do it, but it's his it's sort of question. Um, have you ever tried to make a tune and thought it was that bad that you sucked it off? And if so, what's it going to be called? No. Is that the name of the track or no? <laughs> <laughs> no, because what you do and as a producer and artist is you, you, you've got to create all the time. Yeah. So you create all the time, but it might not develop into something. Yeah. So you have, if you've got an idea, record the idea. Yeah. And you never know where it's going to go. You never know where it's going to go. You never know what, what era it's going to go. No. Uh, you never know what time it's going to go. You never know what style you're going to produce it in. Yeah. So if you've got an idea, always do the idea. Brilliant. Record it. Uh, and then... See what it needs to be. You see, see what it needs to be. Yeah. See what... Because sometimes it's like a lyric. It's like that. It's like... The African Barter goes up that piano riff. Does that wear? Yeah. It's a happy accident. That's so it. so yeah. you might have a, a track that you've produced uh, ten years ago, yeah. but it might be the name of the next EP. Now. The happy accident. The happy accident. Name of your next EP. Right, yeah. Yeah. right boys. We've only got a couple of minutes time. So. I'd just like to say, on behalf of Dance Decade, the PA's night, it's the second one, this is going to be absolutely epic. Again, huge amounts of lineups. We've got nine, ten live acts, you've got ten DJs downstairs, all playing violin, from various different genres of old school. And you think, 20 quid to get in? That's an absolute steal, all right? Before we leave, this kind gentleman has bought down, not only one of his tunes, but a very limited edition uh, promo, all right? Now, for all the details, there's going to be a competition for this, so you need to keep in touch, keep looking at the PA's night on Facebook, uh, and we'll get it involved. It'll be involved in this young gentleman's uh, Twitter as well, and everyone that gets involved uh, will pick a random person out of a hat or from a lineup that these will decide, and you're going to get the chance to come down to the PA's night and get this uh, gentleman who is going to sign it, because he's an absolute I'm, legend. I'm going to sign this live now, so basically what it is, if you come to Dance Decades PA's Part 2, 25th of March. 25th of March. Uh, if you retweet on Twitter at Baseheads, is there anybody out there? Just at Baseheads uh, and Dance Decade, you can w come backstage, meet us, and we'll give you this record in person. That's so, a treat. So here that we go. I'm going to sign it now. I'm going to sign it in front of the ca camera so you can see it. I want it. <laughs> Not bad. So there you go. You can own that. 2017. There's a. So all you have to do is retweet at, on Twitter at Baseheads. Super. Right, Desert. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. <coughs>
Super, love it, mate. You can't wait to see you backstage, side stage, on stage, in the crowd. We're gonna have a fantastic. Absolutely it's fantastic. gonna be fantastic, man. I'm looking forward to. Twenty fifth of March, Preston Guildhall, PA's night. Don't be there. Get involved in this competition. They are rare, and if no one else does, I'm gonna put myself in at least five times. <laughs> <laughs> right, peace out, peeps. All good.